in Luke chapter 2 and verse 6 is a piece of the Christmas story. And I want to read it to you, but you know it. Most of us, if we really try, could probably quote it by heart. But I want you to listen to the descriptiveness of how special the birth of Jesus was. It says, while they were there, the time came for Mary to give birth. She gave birth to a son, her firstborn. She wrapped him in a blanket and laid him in a manger because there was no room in the hostel. And there were shep, shepherds camping in the neighborhood. They had set night watches over their sheep. Suddenly, angels, God's angels, stood among them, and God's glory blazed around them. They were terrified. The angels said, don't be afraid. I'm here to announce great, a great joyful event that is meant for everybody worldwide. A Savior has been born in David's town. A Savior who is Messiah and Master. This is what you're to look for. A baby wrapped in a blanket lying in a manger. And suddenly, or at once, the angel was joined by a huge angelic choir singing God's praises. Glory to God in the heavenly heights. Peace to all men and women on earth who please him. As the angel choir withdrew into heaven, the shepherds talked it over. Let's get over to Bethlehem as fast as we can and see for ourselves what God has revealed to us. They left running and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. Seeing was believing. So they told everyone they met what the angels had said about this child. All who heard the shepherds were impressed. Mary kept all these things to herself, holding them dear and deep within herself. The shepherds returned and let loose, glorifying and praising God for everything they had heard and seen. It turned out exactly the way they'd been told. Why was there such a celebration? Why, you know... Did the wisest men on the planet in the then known day journey for months and actually years to find this baby Jesus? Why did angels appear to shepherds? And why does the Old Testament prophesy about this happening? I mean, this day, do you know what percentage of the Old Testament prophecies came true Stunning and stunning amounts of prophecies that this Jesus would be born. The problem is religion grabs it and has made this kind of religion like every other religion out there. This baby, this baby was the son of God. You know that probably one of my favorite Christmas, oh, I don't know, it depends on what, what day it is. My favorite Christmas carol today it's Mary, did you know? Isn't it a stunning thing to think that, Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that this baby boy would save your sons and your daughters? Did you know that this baby boy, and the quotes that it makes in this song, had once walked with angels, would save the world? This incredible Christmas morning, it isn't just about having a baby. Most of us here have had babies. We love that part of the story, but it's not about having a baby. It's about the Son of God coming, and he was coming to change everything why was there such a celebration why did the wisest men who had been studying the stars all their lives look and begin to follow i haven't got time to teach on this but the bible's very clear that the future seems to be written in the stars but it's forbidden for us to go in there and try to mess with it or find out what's going on We'll never see things clearly anyway. But these men, they came by caravan, and they knew that a king had been born on the planet. When you look at all the different pieces of the Christmas story, 
how that the king then was so upset that a new king was born that he began to kill baby boys. I mean, the Christmas story is broad. It's long. It's, it is just so special. And I, I want you to understand something today that the reason it was so special is because of what he would do in the next 33 years. That mankind would be released from one of the most horrid curses that had ever plagued the human race or the world for thousands and thousands of years. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17, listen to this as I read you it and, and listen to the word. It says, when someone becomes a Christian, he becomes a brand new person. He's not the same anymore. A new life has begun. All these things are from God who brought us back to himself through what Jesus did. And God has given us the privilege of urging everyone to come into his favor and to be reconciled to him. For God was in Christ restoring the world to himself. No longer, no longer counting men's sins against them but blotting them right out. This is the wonderful message he has given us to tell others. We are Christ's ambassadors. God is using us to speak to you. We beg you as though Christ himself were here pleading with you, receive the love he offers you. Be reconciled to God. Religion has a way of taking the message of Jesus and just turning it into another self-help, new age kind of thing. But did you know that once you make a decision for Christ and you invite him into your life, your heart, you are now an ambassador. An ambassador is a representative of a country or a kingdom, and he is to go out and represent that country or kingdom. You and I are. And do you know what we're supposed to be telling people? We're supposed to be telling them, by the way, yeah, 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 just, just by the way, everything you've ever done wrong, every selfish thing you've ever done, everything you've ever done to hurt another, everything you've ever done to hurt God, everything that has ever happened that you're ashamed of, embarrassed of, or things that happened to you that you need to be healed from, all of this has been done. Your sins aren't being held against you. But that's not what you hear on most TV shows. That's not what you hear from most pulpits. It's some preaching person stirring up how bad and wicked you are, you dirty, good for nothing, rotten human being. You need Jesus, repent or go to hell. And they take truth. That yes, there's an eternity, there's a hell. But they cram and mix up all this stuff. The message, the message that Jesus brought to us and caused to happen is that your and my wrongdoings, sins, it's not going to be forgiven, it's been, it's done. The only thing you need to do is receive the love gift. Do you know why years and years and years ago, Christians wanted gifts involved at Christmas time? Because Christmas is all about a gift. This gift wasn't just to keep you kind of at peace while your messed up life barely got by. It wasn't just to give you psychological comfort. But this gift was somebody who would trade lives with you. And when he traded lives with you and with me, He took my messed up life. And he took your messed up life. He said, well, Leon, I really haven't done anything wrong. And according to Jesus, people who think that way are the worst. (laughs) Because they think every sin is external. and They forget these internal pride sins that so many religious people have. You know, it's like that story of Jesus. And he was talking about these two guys praying. This one guy just beat his chest, hung his head, 
and said, be merciful to me, a sinner. And the other religious guy, oh, Lord, I thank you that I'm not like him. <laughs> Religion, it tends to look at all of the external, forgetting that what goes on in the internal, the attitudes of the heart, is even what causes the stuff on the external. God looks at the heart. He's not impressed. So if you've often looked at church or Christianity and been turned off, welcome to the club. I hate religion. But I love Jesus. <laughs> now when he walked the planet to give us a look at what God was like, he was always hanging out with people that the religious people would go, Who is Jesus with now? Yeah, uh, you know, the drunks, yeah, they're over there. What? Where's Jesus now? Yeah, yeah. You know those women on the place on the edge of town? And, yeah, he's just over there talking to them. What? He shocked people. And who was this? This was God. Came to earth. Emmanuel, God with us. Where was he? Talking to people that religion wouldn't talk to. Talking to people that religion would just judge and, and put over in a box. And he was talking with them, encouraging them, accepting them. <laughs> I would rather have a church full of drunks and prostitutes than a bunch of religious, arrogant Christians. Good place to say amen. <laughs> <laughs> this message, this gift that was to give to all of us was that this Jesus, this Jesus, he would take the sins of the world. And when he did, God would no longer be holding them against you. You know, there's so much talk today about what's a sin, what's not a sin. And good Lord, the list is endless because the word sin simply means uh, Hamartia in the Greek, it means missing the mark for God's best. The word sin has been so misused, like if you sin, you go to hell. Well, the Bible says, to him who knoweth to do good and doesn't do it, that's a sin. So it's not sin that sends you to hell, okay? And the word sin has been, it, it literally means just missing the mark for God's best. You know when you screamed at your, your husband the other day? Yeah, you missed the mark. Could have been handled better. That was sin. Am I going to hell now? No. Not if you've given your life to Christ. Because the only thing that gets us to spend eternity with him is to receive this beautiful gift. The gift is Jesus. And what he did for you and I, this great exchange when he took your life and he gave you his life. A life that people say, well, I can't please God. I'll, we all figured that out for ourselves, too. But the life that we live is where Jesus pleased God. And his life is now flowing through me. And that's why God approves of you and me. We've given our lives to him. And this authority and this power that is now ours actually gives us the ability to stop the things that are destroying us, destroying our marriage, destroying our body, destroying our mind. Because if you don't live according to the incredibly beautiful principles that God put here, he's just saying, do these things and you can have a great sex life. Do these things, you can have a party all your life. What do you mean? The Bible says he who has a merry heart has a continual party throughout his entire life. This peace, this joy that is an internal one, not an external one, is all because of this Jesus. And I want you to understand that at Christmas time, we should celebrate. I was driving, I, I mention this every year, but I was driving in a new section of this city. No, I mean, as opposed to the other area where I, this guy always has the hum, word humbug written on his balcony out down Henderson Highway. So now I was over on St. James, and I was looking at a part where there's another guy, got, or a girl, whoever has a or big, big humbug. And you know what? I could agree with him if they're looking at certain pieces of the way the world celebrates Christmas. But it's not humbug when in my heart I celebrate Jesus. I buy gifts for my kids and my grandkids and the people around. And, and I just do it because the greatest gift was Jesus. 
Christmas is about gifts. Christmas is about putting our faith in him. If you've never, of course all of us have, experienced periods of heartache and brokenness and things not going the way you desire or want, even in the midst of the valleys, he's still God. There's an old song I used to sing in our church and They would sing it in different quartets in the old southern style. And it just basically said, he's not just God of the mountains. He's God in the valleys. When things don't go good, you can just trust him. You can just know that there's an eternity called heaven. That's beautiful. But even down here on this planet, he is in love with you. Do not let a religious person make you feel like you're worthless, that you can't come to Jesus, that unless you obey all these rules... You'll never see heaven because heaven and acquiring it is not a rule-based thing. It is a free gift that this baby Jesus came to deliver to you and I. So everywhere we go as followers of Christ, we should love everybody even if we disagree with their doctrine. We should treat everybody with incredible respect even if we disagree on what's right and wrong. What makes us friends and what makes us able to do business, to be neighbors, isn't because we agree. Today, we've got all these specialty groups who want us all to believe what they believe, as though that's going to make us friends. Good Lord, I've lived with Sally now for like 35 years, and we still don't believe the same about everything. (laughs) But it doesn't stop me from loving her and and being her best friends and hanging out and enjoying the world. When Jesus came, nobody believed the way he believed. Yet everybody was loved, which means valuable. This Christmas, make sure that if you have been raised a little judgmental and if you were raised in religion, you are. And let's learn to love people the way they are, as messed up or as perfect, whichever they think they are. And let's just recognize that there's not a thing we can do about the human condition except share the news of the most beautiful, the greatest gift that has ever been delivered on this planet. And it was the message of the good news of Jesus that 2,000 years ago, everything that you'll ever do wrong was dealt with so that the God of the universe would look at you and say, stop trying on your own. Stop dealing with all the shame that is destroying you mentally. Stop dealing with all the brokenness that's been done to you that makes your world the way it is. And just receive a free gift. You know, when you get a gift, someone hands you in our culture and You start unwrapping this gift till you come to what it is. Jesus and what he did for you and I is a beautiful gift. It's worth celebrating. To some of you who've been believers for years and years, I hope you haven't slipped into the ditch of just becoming familiar with Jesus. And I hope you get back to your first love. That how could you not love Something so amazing, the Son of God, who came to this earth and, and a, as a baby to become a physical human being, to, 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 to know what it is to suffer, to be tempted, to, to, to die, and then to bring you and I this amazing new life, this Christmas. If you're disenfranchised with how much money it costs you and how hard it is to set up parties and how much you got to pay and how much you got to clean your house and all the stuff you've gotten, you know, get back to this is about relationships. And if Christmas has not been good for you because Christmas time was always a lonely time, why don't you, the Bible says, forgetting those things which are behind, I press forward to the mark for the prize of the high calling and just decide that yeah my life wasn't too great around Christmas time but guess what that old me's dead and gone and I've been given a new life in Jesus Christ so I've got a reason to smile to laugh to tip to compliment and encourage all of those around me and wherever I go and if you've never given your life to Jesus Christ accepting that gift by simply saying Jesus come in I give you my life starts the greatest miracle that ever happened 
which is him within you. And now the price that he's paid becomes yours. You see, it's one thing to buy a gift for somebody. It's another thing for them to take it and receive it. You could have a gift wrapped and their name on it. I know sometimes people will buy gifts for those who they've had big fights with, you know, and they're trying to love on them. And you can put the gift under the tree, it's going out the door. You can, you know, have it delivered by, by whatever delivery service and they just refuse to sign for it. Don't want that gift. And uh, no, that guy can, or however. And so even this gift of Jesus saying, receive this beautiful gift of forgiveness and of a new life. A human being has the free will to say no or to say yes. I said yes one day years ago. I've never been sorry. <laughs> this Jesus, I've learned that he's my strength because I'm usually weak. I've learned that he's my peace because I can't manufacture it on my own. He's my joy because I tried to be happy, but after a while, you know, whatever you do to go, ah, 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 it just kind of peters out. But if you really have a joy, if you really have a peace, he is my peace. And I challenge you, make that decision this Christmas season. Make sure Jesus is your Lord and Savior. To all of those who have made that decision, have you left your first love? Do you still have that joy? You know, Christmas time when I was young, I was just, ow, it's Christmas. Then I turned into a teenager, and, you know, you get socks and gotch for Christmas, so after a while, it's, <laughs> then you get your own money, so whatever you want, you buy anyway. And then you have kids. What happens when you have kids? Christmas explodes all over again. Woo -hoo! You get to live Christmas through them. And then they grow up, and once they get their paycheck, what are you going to buy them? So you just buy things that just say, I love you. And then as they get older, it kind of goes, well, what should we do for Christmas? I don't know. Should we do gifts? I don't know. What do you want? I don't know. What do you want? I don't know. What should I buy mom? I have no idea. And they ask Sally, what should I buy dad? He goes, I have no idea. I ask my kids, what do you want? Well, other than something that's way out of my range. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. But then along come grandkids. I want to encourage you to hang on to that, that childlike faith that trusts Jesus, enjoys Jesus. Maybe you should take that humbug frown off your face. Just choose to laugh a little bit. Maybe you should take that little whatever it is that, you know, your, your money look. <laughs> Just decide, why don't you be happy? You have the ability to with Jesus in you. The Bible teaches us the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but it's righteousness, it's peace and it's joy in the Holy Spirit. I discovered that when Leon wants to be a grump, and it's every day, that if I turn to him, I can find joy. <laughs> I found that when everything's freaking me out, got all this work stuff, all the family stuff all going, I can just be at peace. Because when I don't have it, I just need to turn to the Prince of Peace. And as I spend time praying or just meditating or with him, this peace sticks on my life. It's amazing. Come on. Let's make sure that December, that we're laughing, loving, and encouraging people. The Bible says a merry heart is a continual feast. So Leon, who's problem free enough to have a merry heart? Nobody. So it wasn't talking about get problem free. It was just talking about in the midst of what you do. What are you going to do? Curl into the fetal position and suck your thumb? The pains you're having, there's probably somebody in this room 10 times greater pain and heartache than what you're dealing with. And even in the midst of it, the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Did you know every building you go into, every room you enter, you bring something transferable? <laughs> I wish it would be peace. I hope it's joy. Don't transfer humbug. Don't transfer the financial pressure. Don't transfer how people aren't doing enough for you and, or whatever else is going on and just make a decision. I can't control anybody else. So me, I might as well be a continual party. I might as well have a merry heart. I might as well decide to laugh and rejoice because the problem list I got this year, 
probably be different next year. And until I go to be with Jesus, there's always going to be something. So I'm going to learn to dance in the face of the dragon. To show my children, my grandchildren, all the friends around me that with Jesus, I can choose to get up and live, laugh, and enjoy the most beautiful gift the world has ever received. And his name is Jesus. Father, I ask you to touch every person here. I pray that you would help them to make a decision that today it's just time that I change, that I receive Jesus as my, my Savior. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. I pray that for all of those who have known you, that they would return to the joy of their salvation, <laughs> that we'd all make a decision that our job now, our calling is to be an ambassador and to share with everyone the most beautiful gift that Jesus has dealt with all your past and he's given you an incredible future. Help us to share it. That's our calling. That's our purpose. Bless them, I pray, and let this Christmas be the greatest one they've ever had. Let this Christmas, Father, restoration come because of their choice to forgive and to smile. Bring marriages together, families together, in-laws, outlaws. And Father, let the miracle, which is Jesus bringing his peace and his joy, impact every family that is in this room. And let us see miracles this Christmas season. I ask this in your wonderful name. Everybody in agreement with that prayer said, Amen and Amen.